Today we're going to be taking a look at Azure Site Recovery and leveraging Azure Site Recovery to move a virtual machine from one Azure region into another. And keep in mind, um, Azure Site Recovery can be used to migrate machines from on-premise up into the cloud, or as, as I just mentioned, cloud to cloud. So let's go get, get started. So one of the first things we want to do to, to migrate our virtual machine, we will actually want to just make sure our virtual machine is running. So I'm going to just turn on my virtual machine here. One of my DNS servers, I'm just going to go ahead and start that virtual machine up. All right, so once that virtual machine is up and running, um, what you can do, you can click on the virtual machine in the Azure portal. And then over here on the left side here, there is a disaster recovery section. We scroll down, we see we have disaster recovery here. We go into disaster recovery. All right. So once we're in here, you see we get a couple different messages here. So Azure, the virtual machine Azure, Azure VM agent provisioning state and provisioning state unavailable. Ensure that the Azure VM agent installed on the machine. So um, I think, believe I'm getting that since the virtual machine hasn't fully booted up. So once it fully boots up, um, we should get additional information here so we can continue with the setup wizard. So I'm gonna give it a few moments for the VM to come online and then we will continue. So now that my virtual machine is actually running, you can see here in disaster recovery, I, I get a different view. So you can see here, we can see that it's detected that my virtual machine is in North Central US and it has automatically selected a target region of South Central US. Um, so as you may or may not know, various different Azure regions normally have a pair. Um, so they have a pair in a different region in the same country. Um, so <clears throat> by default, when you when you use this wizard, it will actually automatically select that match pair, but you don't necessarily have to replicate to that area. So say if I wanted to go to somewhere other than South Central US, I, I could replicate this to East US or West US or, or even to Canada is an option here as well for this particular virtual machine. So you, you, depending on where you're trying to move it or if you're, where you want to fill over to in the case of that you really are using this for disaster recovery purposes and not for migration purposes. You may want to select a different region than than the default. My purpose is I'm actually going to go to um, I'm going to go to East US, so we're going to be replicating from North Central US over to East US. So I'll make my selection, and then when we go up to the Advanced Settings tab. You see here it will automatically populate various different um, objects here, so um, it will try to um, by default, it'll try to create like a new resource group to contain um, the items that you're going to be replicating to. So um, up here, you select your subscription that you want to use. And then on the VM resource group, you see my source is DNS master. And then I could allow the wizard to automatically create me a new resource group. It names it the original name, but it tags ASR on the end is the default behavior. So I'm just going to go with that default. And then also it provides you, you have to select a equivalent um, virtual network in the region where you're replicating it to. So in my case, I have one a LTV Azure Lab dash apps, that's the source. And then again, by default, it can create one, uh, a new virtual network in that same region um, if you want, or if you already have a VNet in that region, you can leverage that. So in my case, I'm gonna leverage an existing VNet that I already have in East US. And then the next part, you can configure the availability. So this particular virtual machine is not currently in a um, availability set, so it selects that by default. But in the case when I'm filling over, I, I could um, set the system up and put it into availability set. So if I want to create an, another DNS server to replicate this one, I can I can have them both live within that availability set. Um, but for, well, actually, I will do that. Let's, when I migrate it over, I'll, I'll let it go into availability set. And then again, it'll automatically create an availability set name and it tags ASR on the end. 
Next thing we need to decide on, um, you can allow it to, again, create its own storage settings. So when you're using Azure Site Recovery, um, there is a temporary cache storage account that you that it leverages. So where it temporarily stores the data there before it replicates it to wherever it needs to go. Um, so uh, again, by default, it'll create one for me or I can use an existing one um, if I want. So in this case, I'm just going to allow it to create one for me. And again, source storage, so the target storage, what kind of storage we want to go to. So in this case, it's a standard um, local redundant storage, right? Again, I'll allow it to use the same thing. And then replication settings. It selects a few default for us, like what recovery vault we're going to use, if you already have created one or if you want to allow it to use one I already have one so I'll, I'll let it leverage that one and then a replication policy so here it doesn't actually allow you to make any setting changes at this setting at, at this point so it, by default it puts a 24-hour retention policy when you build it going through the wizard here and then finally down here at the bottom there's a few um, update or extension settings that you can you can um, adjust so if you had specific automation accounts already pre-staged that you use for this purpose you could go and select that automation account or again allow it to create an automation account and do all the plumbing for you automatically so i'm going to allow it to do all of that automatically and then finally we just go and review um, the settings that we're going to do so we get a kind of a, a overview of what it's about to do once we click next and if everything looks good can review and start replication so now in the background what that'll do it'll go out and create all of those all of those target resources that we just specify so it'll go and create the resource groups it'll create the storage account it'll go out and create the recovery salt recovery services vault um, that cache storage account that we talked about it will create the various different policies and then also it will deploy the ASR agent within my virtual machine, um, wire all that up into the account, and then actually start the initial replication. So um, really in like five, 10 minutes, you can get replication set up, and then it's off to the races where it'll, it'll do all the rest of it for you, assuming nothing fails. So like from time to time, you may, if say, there's some particular issue with the VM um, where it couldn't install the software for some reason, or other other errors, errors that could happen it will show you that where you can see a step-by-step -step what's occurring as as this appointment um, continues but if, if you get a failure you can always kind of come back and retry um, or fix whatever the error is and then retry it again so this will take several minutes for this to deploy so if we go up here at the top here you can see the status as it's actually going and attempting to um, deploy deploy this so that site recovery job um, is in progress now where it will again it'll go and create all those all those resources and install the agent and go from there so I'm gonna give this a few minutes to run and then once it finishes we'll we'll come back and check out our progress you can see here as time progresses you'll see several various different steps pop up as it goes through and do the various different work. So this will probably take a few more minutes before it's fully up and going, but you see here all the steps so far have been successful and the enable replication step is actually in progress now. So here we are, we're back on the disaster recovery screen. So you can see it looks a lot different now as it progresses through the steps. So you see the replication health status is now healthy. The status is still enabling the protection. And then once the protection is fully enabled, it will actually start the initial replication of the VM until it's designated target. So if we scroll down here, we can kind of see what's going to happen. So it's showing data is going to be moving from that North Central U.S. location to the East U.S. location that, that I designated during the installation or during the wizard. So it'll be several more minutes for this to fully get complete. After the, the protection has been fully enabled and the initial synchronization has happened, you will see something very similar to what we're seeing here. So we see the replication health is now healthy. 
the current status is protected. We have a recovery point objective. So right now, if there will be a, a say there is a failure right now, I will be approximately 50, 52 seconds out of date as far as the current state of the virtual machine right now. And then we have some failover readiness information. So you can see I've never performed a test failover on this particular issue. And there's no known configuration issues as far as is concerned. There's no errors, there's no events. And as you recall, we replicated from North Central US to East US. So down here, that's showing how that's all wired up. And now we're, we're successfully replicated. So it, it, right now at this point, I could do a test failover where it would stage a replica VM in, in the region of choice at the size that I, that I want. And to just ver validate that that machine works, I can give it a new different IP address. I could put it on a different network of um, those type of things. Or I could do a real failover where I would actually shut down the other VM in the other region and then spin up a, that exact same virtual machine in the specified East US region that I configured. So um, as you can see, using Azure Site Recovery can be um, very, very easy, relatively easy to enable uh, for um, a migration scenario. Uh, where you maybe want to migrate something from maybe on-premise to cloud, or again, in my case, cloud to cloud. Or uh, if you just want to um, have a replica virtual machine available, just in the case you have some type of outage in, in your particular region where your virtual machine exists. So I hope this video has been useful, and I'll see you in the next one.